Easter on the loose. Uh, it's been a little while since I've done anything. You can tell by the mullet that I now have. <laughs> anyway, we are in the high school art room today, and today we're going to be creating an optical illusion painting on the floor. Come on! My high school art room is lucky enough to have a dark room. That means my kids get to build cameras and develop photographs with the help of this pretty awesome tool. But even though it's a pretty helpful tool, we have a bit of a problem in here. Let's go check it out. You see, my dark room is pretty decorated on the walls. I have some awesome art students who were able to create some pretty neat stuff. But the problem is, the floor is a disaster now. So today, we're going to paint an optical illusion in one point perspective that makes it look like the floor is falling out from beneath you as you walk in the door. To create your optical illusion, you're going to need paint brushes, paints, I'm using old house paints, and a plan. To create our optical illusion, we're going to use the tool of one point perspective. First, I'm going to draw the dark room. My goodness, I can't even draw a straight line. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. Take two. I'm gonna put my vanishing point inside the door. So that way, when my person who is standing in the doorway, they go to run in the room, it'll look like the floor is falling out right where they stand. So I'm gonna use this little X to make my vanishing point. Then I have to decide, what is the shape of my falling floor going to look like? I'm going to make the ed edges look jagged, because then it'll look more like it's crumbling away. With the shape of my falling floor decided, I'm now going to use my vanishing point to create the side walls of the falling floor. If I'm looking into a deep hole, it looks like all the sides are going down deep into the darkness. That vanishing point is going to give us the illusion that that hole is right where we stand. So, taking each point of my fallen floor, I'm going to go to my vanishing point. What I've done now is I've created the side walls or the faces of those walls inside the hole. Then, using the tool of value, which is that lightness or darkness of an object, I'm going to use my paint to create the illusion that is deep and dark inside that hole. So the bottom of each of my faces is going to be dark, and as it gets towards the top, it's going to get lighter. to make it look like my floor is really far down when it's broken in. I'm going to paint the rest of my floor just to look like ground. Let's get started! My vanishing point is going to be in the door. That's where you guys are right now. I'm going to start by creating the outline of my hole. Then, just like we did before, I'm going to make all of the faces by taking the points of the hole towards my vanishing point, which is inside the door. With a pretty rough outline, it's time to start painting. Because I'm painting the whole floor, I'm going to start the farthest away from my drawing. That way, as I paint, I can work towards the door and escape when I'm done. That took a little while. 
Now it's time to start working on the details of our optical illusion. Let's go get some different values of paint. Typically, to shade or tint your paint means to make it darker or lighter. Most of the time to do that, you're gonna use black paint to make it darker and white paint to make it lighter. Luckily, I've got a lot of old paint, and so I just have a darker brown I'm gonna use along with a little bit of black to create that dark or shaded illusion of being darker inside the hole. As I begin to paint, I'm gonna start with the section that is farthest back, so that way if I overlap into these other sections a little bit, when it's their turn to be painted, I can cover over anything that I might have accidentally got in that area. I'm gonna start with my dark brown and work down. As I go, I'm gonna add a little bit of black at a time to make it a little bit darker so that it looks like the hole is really deep. Here we go. Well, that's a decent start, but we've gotta let that dry before we can do some more serious color blending and sharpen up our lines. While that's drying though, let's go check out another example of One Point Perspective. This is our high school library, and this behind me is another example of One Point Perspective. This mural, which our lovely librarian Debbie has let me take over a year, thanks Debbie, to finish. But this example of One Point Perspective uses a vanishing point in the center. In fact, right in the middle of the door is where the vanishing point is. All of my receding lines from the top of the bookshelves and the floor all move towards that vanishing point, creating the illusion that this is three-dimensional, even though it's a brick wall. Probably my favorite part of this entire painting project was the doorknob on the door. I painted it to look three-dimensional, and even though it's really just flat, people come up and touch it all the time thinking it's a button. Now that the paint is dried, uh, I'm reassessing the situation and we've got to make some modifications. First thing is, I want to create a larger opening over here. I want this hole to look like it's coming all the way over. Same over here. I want to make this look bigger or deeper. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to add another layer of paint. Our second coat is really bringing it to life, but we have to wait to let it dry so we can really make our really blacks super black and our lighter browns a little bit lighter. We don't want to try and glue the color too much at once because we'll just start ruining the great blending that we have. Along with making our space larger, I also decided to play with some of the edges and make them a little bit jagged. When the paint dries, we'll better be able to see it, but what I'm doing there is just creating it to look more like it's broken and not that it's perfectly straight lines. To finish up, we've got a couple things to do. First, we're gonna take our original floor color here and we're gonna go back over the edges. We want it to look a little bit crumbly and a little bit rough. I'm also gonna overlap the area where I've been painting so it looks like the ground is hanging over a little bit. Then, we're gonna use some of our brown and black to make little cracks that are coming back from the edges. Again, aiding in that illusion that that floor is crumbling away. Lastly, I'm gonna go back over the black at the very bottom to make it look super dark and add a little bit of my brown to the very edges to make it super light so the, those ridges coming forwards pop out some more. 
Hopefully when that's all dry, we'll have a finished optical illusion. And now we wait again for it to dry. It's finally dry. Let's go check it out. So, as you can see from our final details, it actually looks three dimensional. Our final highlights and the cracks really bring our painting to life. And there you have it! That's how to paint an optical illusion on your floor. Can't wait to see what you create!